Now we're going to talk a little bit about identifying these bears. Color is a bad way to do it. Size is not necessarily good. You can have young, young grizzlies, old black bears, healthy ones, not so healthy. So size, again, is not a good indicator. You need to look at some other features. If you look over there, that grizzly, you can see the claws. Those are fairly typical grizzly bear claws in length, whereas the black bear right next to him, our brown colored black bear, has very short claws, almost like a dog. Now again, if you can see the claws, you're probably pretty close. <laughs> um, so it's not one of those things you want to have to rely on. This next one is a kind of a, an abstract thing to look at, but it really does work. And, and what it is, is when you look at the animal, the bear, what does its face remind you of? Is it a big, round, kind of cubby face? And, the, and smaller, rounder ears, that's going to be a grizzly bear. Or is it more pointed, more of a snout like a dog? So if you look at a picture of a bear, and no matter what the color is, but it's got that, that more pointed features, it's probably going to be a black bear. The blockier features are going to be the grizzly bear. Tracks. The thing about tracks is very rarely do you find a nice track. If you had a good track, though, the thing that you can look at that is a generally a good indicator is not the size of the track, but where the toes fall in relation to the claws. And grizzly bears have longer claws, and they're farther out. Black bears have shorter claws, so that their claw marks are basically right next to the toe. And this is one of those definitive things you can see. It's going to be better in some than in others, but it's that hump on the grizzly bear. Uh, that hump there is just a huge set of muscles that hooks into those front legs and, so they can do basically the butterfly stroke. Except they're not swimming, although they do swim. Uh, what they're doing is digging. Grizzly bears are just basically built to be rototillers. And surprise means that the bear didn't know we were there. The bear doesn't know you're there. You have, and then when he finally does, it's too, it, he reacts. Versus a predatory situation where the bear, for whatever reason, has decided you're a meal. Okay, and those are the two basic things you need to worry about, or think about. But we're gonna talk about far away first. And this is what they use more in Alaska, is when there's a bear over on the other side of the, the meadow, Bear, I'm here, okay? So you make a noise, let the bears know you're there, and slowly get out. Again, never run in any of these situations. A bear's always gonna be faster than you. But if it gets to the point where the surprise was so close that something's gonna happen, that's when you need to process black versus grizzly. Because again, the black bear is strong and fast and powerful, but doesn't necessarily know it. The, the grizzly bear inherently knows that it, it can have you if it wants you. Now, particularly with a grizzly bear, or even black bears, if he starts to woof and starts to wag the head and slobber, that means I don't like what I'm sensing out there, okay? That's when you need to decide black bear, grizzly bear. If he is a black bear and the black bear charges, Colette should make herself look big, scream, yell, throw sticks, rocks, whatever you have at the bear, okay? If it's a black bear, you're trying to convince that bear not to be there, okay? Now, if Ken is a grizzly bear and he's coming at her and he's actually gonna make contact, you need to lay down. Lay down flat on the ground with your hands behind your head. Can you do, yep, and spread your legs out. Now the bear comes along and he's not happy. Again, he's not, he's not there to eat you. He's there to let you know he wasn't happy. What he's going to try to do is maybe roll you over to get to your soft front part. So what you do is you roll over and over again. And then back over. Always try to move Jim, Jimbo there. Always trying to protect your soft underbelly. What a bear will do many times is bite you once or twice, um, but he'll walk away. The, the, the proper thing after a bear encounter is to lay there. The last thing you want to do is say, the bear's gone, and run. Okay, you want to make sure the bear has moved on. And that is the, what we see in most cases in, with bear attacks, is that the bear is only letting you know they're not happy. Okay, and the, the key thing to do is just take it. And that sounds like a tough thing, but I've talked to people that survived it, and you're so frozen with fear that it's pretty easy to sit there and let the bear do what it wants. So that's if you have no bear spray, no firearms or anything. Um, and, and the bottom line is, um, when it comes to self-defense, 
Uh, firearms are not as the tool they are when they are for hunting. For hunting, a, a, a firearm, a pistol, a large caliber pistol, or a rifle, or a shotgun, or even a bow and arrow can be the right tool to hunt with. But when you're reacting to a bear charging at 35 miles an hour, trying to get off a kill shot is next to impossible. Not impossible, but very difficult. Especially if you don't practice, okay? And when I say practice, I mean a lot because of the fear factor that kicks in in your adrenaline. So again, we, when we're hunting, we control the shot. When we are reacting, a gun isn't gonna, isn't gonna work. That is where bear spray will work. Uh, one thing that's important is you need to have it where you can get to it, which means right here, not in the backpack. If you have time to get out of the backpack, you're probably not gonna need it, or what you might want to do is if you have time, you see that bear over there and he's kind of checking you out, give a little blast. The bear will generally smell it and run off. So it's not a silver bullet, but it's a lot better tool than, than a firearm for the most part. Over 60% of the time, grizzlies do a thing called a bluff charge. They want to see what you're going to do. So first thing you don't want to do is run. The second thing you don't want to do is if you have a gun, shoot the bear, because unless you're sure you're going to kill the bear, now you've just made it mad, okay? And that's where that bluff charge can turn into an attack. So, but if you have bear spray and you put the bear spray out, it will, again, go right to the nose, right to the brain, cause pain, he'll get out of there. Bears do not like bear spray, but yet it does not permanently injure them. Um, the other thing about bear spray is uh, um, if you're in a situation where you need it and you can't get it out in time, and this has happened uh, more than once, uh, the people that have had it um, will just shoot themselves. And they will be a cloud. They will be snotting and sneezing and going that way. The bear will be snotting and sneezing and going that way. Okay? It really does work, and it's, it is a last resort, but people have done it and, and have had it work. So again, have it where you can get at it. Know how to work the safety. That's what this is. You want to have the safety on because if so, I've talked to folks that thought they were being really smart and had it ready to go, and then they t well, would bend over to tie their shoelace and actually have it go off. 